Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. It's time for another Road to Do 2000 video. This time for real, obviously, as last time. We went for a bit of a hiatus and uh, played a Blitz game instead. But today, you know, let's let's. I'm in the mood for some calm chess. Uh, this is partly due to the fact that I got beaten by a twenty-one seventy yesterday, like very badly. Uh, like under twenty moves, I was significantly worse. Uh, but now we are playing the white pieces we played like yesterday. And hopefully, in the Queen's Gambit decline, you know, we might get some type of advantage. And a6, I know from experience, it's not the worst move, but it's not a good move either. Because it's not developing a piece, right? We already developed a piece. He did not. So, what does this move do? Well, it prepares b5. And I'll not immediately, maybe in the near future, maybe you take first and then try to... Um, ah, okay, I see. So you, you're intending to take on c4, and then try to play b5 so you can keep the pawn. Yeah, so it's not that bad at all, since after some... Yeah, thinking, so we could... Counteract this plan by just simply taking a pawn. And we have decent play. The position is already opened up. You can also play the slow looking move e3, which has a downside of you know blocking in this bishop. So yeah, it's either one or the other. Let's play simple chess. Let's just take. So this is not really well, it's still trident, but maybe a little less. And instead of playing e3 now, maybe we should play bishop f4. It's it's um it's my preferred setup right now. It looks like a London. Maybe it is a London, I don't know. But it definitely has more to it than just a London. Alright, so knight f6. Intending maybe to go to knight e4 in the near future. Let's just develop with e3. You know, I'm imagining something like this, e3, bishop e7, knight f3, castles, bishop d3, and knight b7, castles. It all looks fairly standard. I don't see any opportunities to really hamper on the position, or really go for a winning position. So we should be patient, develop our pieces. You know, knight f3 was a nice alternative, by the way. And just slowly go for it. Just slowly go for it. C5. So usually in D4 openings, which we played, you want to go for C5. The reason why you want to go for C5 or E5 is to open up the position and get your pieces out. In this case, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, well, taking helps him develop. And after the trade, so we should calculate it. This is only attacked twice and defended twice, so this is not a problem. So it's it's not a blunder what he just did. Um so what I'm thinking is let's just develop the bishop to d3. And in, in case he plays c4, we just go back. He could also take in that position, but after takes, I don't feel any significant. Dangerous, yes, you can play queen e7 check, but then we play knight e2. So I think this is still a good move. I'm delaying knight f3 because I don't really like to give my opponent easy moves like bishop g4, pinning the knight to the queen. But that's uh, it's probably still a really good move, knight f3. I just don't want to play it. So knight c6, our opponent keeps developing. Really good, uh, good chess, good chess. And our opponent's intending to take twice here. 
So we should defend it. And we defend it by developing another piece. We can play knight f3, we can play knight e2. I prefer knight e2. That's just how I prefer things. Because now if bishop g5 comes, we have f3. It looks awful to play f3, but I think it works in this position. I think it works in this position. And maybe it's also a bit to provoke our opponents to uh, commit to aggressive chess, where oftentimes people tend to miss certain defenses. No, our opponent plays a calm move, bishop e6. Yeah, he's, he's doing great. Um, yeah, good chess so far. Let's just castle. There's no bishop on d6 potentially turning a bishop sack, so I think casting, not even thinking, just casting makes sense. Our plan is to play rook c1, bishop b1 maybe, I don't know, queen c2 if he castles and there's no knight here. That's only wishful thinking, there's a mate here. But, you know, it's good to keep in the back of your mind, but rook c1 is definitely a good plan. Furthermore, we can play f3 and e4 later down the road. Maybe with king h1. Our opponent's plan is to just simply develop. He is a little bit behind in development. And he moved his bishop once. So we could consider taking here. So he has to retake. Um, yeah, he has to retake with the bishop. We open up a square for the knight. We can play rook c1 with this little bit of tempo. There's a3 before I this. I don't. I uh, I'm again not really thinking too much about this move. Black simply loses time. Um. So yeah, I'm just gonna play it. Play rook c1. And if castles. Um. Yeah. Don't know. There's also a very dramatic move here in the position, which is. Knight h5, going for the really good bishop. I don't know if I should allow it or not. Honestly, I don't even know how to play chess. But these type of emotions are really common when you, you know, lose a game the way I did yesterday. Maybe I should show the game as far as I still remember it because it was just a blitz game, but he just mauled me he just mauled me okay so yeah castles so what we also can see here is like are there any undefended pieces or semi undefended pieces meaning pieces that are not defended by pawns but by pieces and in our position we have two right okay the rooks are connected i'm are semi connected i don't know but they are protected they're all protected but these two are semi unprotected what i'm trying to say is this piece is undefended and maybe we should try to find a way to um take advantage of that and i don't see any i don't see any so what i'm thinking is to move the knight somewhere we're not going to move it to b1 obviously to you know hopefully um uh, get in an attack on the bishop, but also maybe getting an attack on another piece. But since uh, ninety four just blunders a piece, knight e four walks into knight d five walks into queen d five and b five. I did not consider actually, but after takes takes takes. Takes, takes, okay, so this is really complicated. Knight b5, a takes b5, rook takes here, rook takes a2, since the a file opened up, and maybe you can play rook takes on b5 to defend the pawn and attack this one at the same time. So what have we gained in this position? Well, we both have an open a line, he has a very good rook on a2, and we have a pretty good, damn good rook as well. 
on b4, targeting this. Let's say queen c1, just defending. Then we even have, um, what do we have there? Queen c1, maybe this queen d2. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But it looks like a very sexy move. Are we going to play it? Yes, we are. Um, I think the position is still equal. But, you know, the threats are definitely there. I think a takes on b5 is the only move. Otherwise, you're allowing the knight to come in, take off the bishop, threatening the knight, uh, threatening the rook. So, yeah. I'm still, even though we made the move, we should still calculate the best move here or look for other moves. After takes, 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 queen c1. You can also play rook a7, by the way, instead of queen c1. Rook is still now here. This is a weak pawn. This is an isolated pawn. We could maybe target it. You can also play bishop b1 in that position. Then he has to go back if he plays queen c1. Or he goes forward to a1. Hmm. We could also consider something like... Um, Queen c2 in that position, maybe. You know, targeting something. Yeah, so even though we play d4, you can clearly see we're going for a very tactical route where uh, there were probably we one winner, and I don't know what's, who that is gonna be. Um, but yeah. Also, by the way, you have bishop b6 here. With bishop b6, I'll just go to uh, d4 with the knight. Just have a really good knight targeting this. Targeting that. Uh, obviously, many the bishop on e6. Yeah. So, I really still think a takes b5 is the move. Rook takes. Rook takes. Rook takes, and queen c1, defending the pawn. He also is threatening knight e4 on the long term, but let's look at what we are threatening. Because in this position, we can also play knight e4, targeting this. But after takes, takes, and uh, it doesn't make sense because the rook is not here, it's here when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So knight e4 in that position is not good. Hmm. Let's see, what else can we do? And as you can see, it might not be the best move, what we just did, but it's definitely an unexpected move. It's affecting your opponent. In a certain way, he's starting to get confused, all sorts of things. Uh, so yeah, always shoot your shot. That's what they say, right? Always shoot your shot. And our opponent's getting quite low on time, but let's ignore that. So we don't play on the time. We play on position, obviously, obviously. What about knight h5 in this position? Knight h5. Oh, it's not a bad move. It's not a bad move. Our opponent takes on e3. All right, all right, all right. That's uh, that's a move that I did not spot. We can take with the bishop or we can take with the palm. We could also just heal in the position. With the bishop, with the knight. Uh, wow. I feel like this is the move. Opening up the rook. Even though the rook is not doing that much. You can later get a rook lift in. Yeah, it spares up some time for us. So after takes, takes, bishop takes. Rook takes on a2. We definitely have takes, takes, takes. And then rook takes on b2. So now we have a rook here on c6, a rook half open, the bishop only needs to move. 
The knight here is maybe a little bit misplaced. It's not really active. So, yeah, I think that's the move. If we go this route, I think this is too passive. Simply going too passive here. We should definitely consider it, though. Takes, 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 takes here. Um, yeah, I don't see much play. Like, if you have the bishop here and a pawn here or a bishop here, it just feels like the bishop here is more passive. By the way, we should calculate this. But after this, nothing's going on, right? Well, you have knight... Whoa here but queen doesn't have to move to e8 queen can also just move to c6 c8 sorry and there we're not threatening that much there we're not threatening that much are we no no so let's take with the pawn takes takes it's a no-brainer takes 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 maybe maybe we should um consider Putting a queen on c2. Maybe. Though I'm not sure. And if he doesn't take here, obviously we play a3. To stop him from getting full control over the open file. That makes sense to me. Mm. But I do think we should take. Takes, 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 take. Maybe knight here, targeting this. But we should definitely be careful because the diagonal is half open for the king. So let's say queen comes to b6, our bishop is already semi undefended. Well, not in, not really in danger. Yeah, just scared for nothing, I guess. And even though we missed a move with what he was gonna play, and I yeah, I totally missed bishop takes, we sort of still get the same just out of the position. We still considered it, and we could easier go through the variations than we would have if he did not do anything on our opponent's time. So I'm considering actually this here. But then he plays e4, d4. That's a really good move, protecting the rook and attacking our queen. So I guess. We are just going for the usual route. And just simply take. And our position is becoming quite open. Everything can happen here. This is 10 plus 5, by the way. So we still have some time to consider our options. We have an isolated pawn. Pawn structure-wise, we're not doing that well, honestly. We have three upon islands, our opponent has two. But because we lack a pawn, we do get some play. I'm not saying we're doing well, but we're definitely not doing awful. We're definitely not doing awful. Still, we are controlling this long diagonal. That's very nice. I wish we could have, it was our move and we could play this. But instead, um, yeah, this is as far as we want. We went with the calculations. We should continue now. So we're obviously trying to take here twice. So you should defend it. Maybe rook c b6 is a good move. After takes, takes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a move. But after rook b6, we have uh, bishop c7. And if now takes, we have take the queen. Yeah, so that's not an option. So we should consider other options for him. You could just simply move the knight. Bishop, not there, because you just simply take. But you can just go back. And after rook d6, aligning a target with the queen and the bishop, what is his move? He goes there, okay. Okay. That's a fairly nice move. Hmm. Yeah, so we get to go queen c1. We can also go back, but that doesn't feel good. Takes, takes, eh, you know. We could, I feel like this is just a no-brainer move. And looking at the time, and looking at the fact that it's not a blunder, we are targeting a rook, um, we just play the move. The knight here is being blocked by this bishop which is on the magic distance 
of the night. So the night is only Utah on this side of the board where not much is happening as of yet. Um, yeah. And I'm struggling to look for a plan here. I'm struggling to look for a plan here. <clears throat> And I kind of simply want to resort to h3, getting away with the pieces on our board, simple chess, uh, also looking at the time. I think this is a good approach. So he goes here, going for the knight maybe, perhaps. Still on our side of the board. We could go queen c3, targeting and again, what is even better, I assume, because this is on the same diag. It's bishop d6, but we should calculate, obviously. Bishop d6, rook here, takes and takes. Looks awful, because first off, a queen can take. What can he do against this move? Can he attack our queen somehow? Well, he can play this. Then we take. And after the recapture, we can take there. Okay, so that doesn't work either. That doesn't work either. So let's make the move. And I haven't completed my calculation, but looking at the time, looking at time management, we're going to go with the half, the half calculation, basically, where you didn't calculate every variation, which you should do, um, but you kind of did it halfway. And I'm suggest I'm thinking he will play this, this, and maybe this. And after rook c6 back, I don't see any threats. Maybe he wants to put the knight there. Oh! He takes the knights instead. I think we just take back. Simple chest. Maybe knight here is a move. We just drop back. And all of a sudden we are up at the exchange, but down the palm. All right, rook there. So this feels like a no brainer move. Um, yeah, feels like really good actually. To so just simply deny the open file for now. Okay, that's a good move. What is he targeting? Nothing concretely. Not hang concretely. We can just simply go rooks on the seventh, I feel. But then this comes. Then this comes. Rooks on the seventh may not be the way to go. Whew. Yeah, exciting chess, huh? So he's threatening f6. And we should find a way to go about this. And I think the way is queen f4. Targeting this, but also targeting this. So in case f6 happens, we can simply sack maybe. No, we cannot because knight takes. But yeah, time scramble. Um, here, knight goes back, defends it. Very nice. I didn't even spot this. Why didn't I even spot this? Yeah, that's a good move. That's a good move. So now if we go if you go here, maybe we go bishop here instead. That looks like a sexy move. Hmm. Yeah, I'm struggling to look for moves here actually. Let's go bishop here. Maybe rerouting the bishop to a different square. Oh he might have this. Yeah. Yeah, I totally missed that one too. Let's go back for a little bit. Let's go back for a little bit. Resettle. 30 seconds against 10. Let's resettle. Let's calm down. It's not going that well. Um, let's go with the original plan. Of resettling here and then maybe have a passer. Also, we have this idea. Also, we have this idea. But that's a very risky approach. It goes there. Very sensible. Um, yeah, let's just go back for now. I think he will take. And we will start running down the board both. Or not. Now trying to settle here. Now we're trying to settle there. It's going that way. Okay. Let's try to trade a mate. Turning mate now. If takes, we have mating thread on the board. Goes that way. Very sensible. Oh, yeah. And now where to go? Let's go here. Still protecting the pawn somewhat. But 
I up my chances. It's actually quite low in these sort of time scrams. He goes for this approach. Yeah, that's sensible. Let's protect it. So if takes, we just simply take, protect it. There. Again, we're gonna... Well, let's go a bit more active here, actually. Still protecting the rook, but turning some checks, which are annoying. He avoids it. Um, let's go here. He's offering a draw. We should probably take it, but I want to go on, actually. I want to go on, actually, because I have actually a... Uh, I might have a plan. Oh, he's turning to take here. Let's go here. Defending, attacking, he pushes. All's very sensible. Let's go here for now. Yeah, and it might just go down to a draw. Yeah. Okay. I don't think there was anything to play for. It was actually very hard to uh, get through. Still very exciting game. I don't know. Definitely, uh, let's just analyze. Without an engine, but with the evil bar. An A6 is apparently not great. But not bad either. So our evaluation was about right. We took because we are more developed. And I think the opening phase went pretty smoothly. Where nothing, anything crazy happens. We just developed our pieces and castled. Here, yeah, we went for this. So he loses a bit of time. Okay, and the evaluation says plus 0 0.9. So that on a positional basis, this is actually quite big. But since I'm not a positional player, I decided to go for the, yeah, <laughs> the tactical route he took here. And yeah, I think that's the best move. After retaking, apparently we are still doing fine. We took back, and here's, I think guess this is the place where we went wrong. Bishop takes was a bit of a lazy move. Maybe we should have played a3 here. Um, but engine doesn't like my idea either. Engine doesn't like my idea either. So this, I assume there's a super hard move to find. <clears throat> Which we did not find. First off, his pawn structure is damaged. Maybe we should play knight here. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. But okay. We took, took back, take, takes, takes. And we get into a situation where actually we, we're not doing that well. We're not doing that well. Rook b4. And now we do get this. And uh, yeah. Apparently this is a good end game for us. Nothing to risk. Knight here. And I felt like there was something in this. I really felt that I had some trick here. Some tactic. Some way to really go for the win here. And I came up with Queen F4, which is probably not a move. It is the move. And after Bishop back, might have missed something. I was thinking about g4, back on h5. But I, I don't see it, honestly. It's probably something super obvious. I went bishop here. Here, we have to go back. Yeah, that was clearly a mistake. Clearly a mistake. Should have gone for g4, whatever that entailed. And after this, yeah. Okay, so I cannot find the move. I have no clue what the move is in this position. Instead of bishop c7, there is a move, but I cannot find it. And I think it's rook here, maybe. But I think after f6, everything is fine. Um... Well, he could consider sacking. Oh, it is. 
But I don't understand how to continue this line after this. Because you don't really have checks, do you? Oh! Wow. How sophisticated. And you win back. This. But you still have to win. You still have to win. Well, this is also weak. Yeah, this is... Yeah, now that you put it on the board, it's actually quite logical. And if you don't do anything... Oh, that's not the way to go. I guess you still go... Well, it's still quite difficult to play. Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm gonna consult our good friend, the engine here. It might be handy to... Uh, Show you guys as well. Just give me a little bit of a second. All right, this is the position. Don't mind my head, it's not being in there, but let's go right into that moment. Well, this is way past that moment where we could have played. Takes on here. Apparently the move is Queen f5, which I still don't even understand, because you can just go g6, right? Oh, no, you can't. I mean, obviously I meant this. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, engine. After takes, you have check and mates. Very nice. But I was pondering about this move. After queen d7, rook c7, going for this. Okay, e6. H6. Ah, wait. You can just go back with him, Bishop. All right, let's just play the best move for black. Rook G7 check. King, Rook H8. Okay, this I, I believe white is in the deeds. Better looking at this position. But previously, I just didn't believe it. Rook A7. Rook B6. Rook G7. King G8, here. What is going on? Oh, wow. And if you didn't play this move? There's this, this. Okay, so the position is just slowly collapsing, I assume. You cannot take because of... Oh, yeah, that was also the question. You cannot take because of Queen H6 check, but after King H8, I'm... And takes, we are still, you know, in unclear waters. Because after takes, I guess this is a winning endgame. Okay, five, going after the pawn. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that was the game. We uh, did not manage to win it. It was a solid draw, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah. See you guys next time. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Oops. Yeah, that's also not smart. See you guys next time. Bye.